Right, it is 11 o'clock, so I think we'll get going. So welcome everyone, good morning. Um, my name is Danielle. Thank you for attending today's very quick session uh, in conjunction with Conveyancing Data Services. Um, just a bit of housekeeping, as always, for each of these that we do. Uh, I am still working from home. I am very sorry if you can hear my very loud seagulls today. They are being exceptionally vocal, um, but hopefully you can hear me clearly. Uh, a copy of the slides and a recording will be made available at the end of today's webinar. So if you would like any of those, please do feel free to reach out and we will get those out to you. Uh, you should see a control panel on your screen, which allows you to ask written questions, please feel free to submit these as we go along and I'll either answer them during or after the webinar, depending on the time. And as always, there'll be a feedback survey either uh, at the end or in the uh, follow-up email that we, sen we send you out after uh, the webinar today. So uh, let's get started. Um, I really do hope that some of you have had some, or all of you have had some type of rest given uh, the end or the, the starting of the taper of the stamp duty holiday. It's been an exceptionally busy, uh, busy time for everyone. Um, and I do think quite a lot of people have, have had some time off. So I hope you've all had a bit of a break. Um, and then of course, starting of the madness again. But today I'm gonna focus on what we've done recently with Grantshire product enhancements. So, you know, uh, it's good to start a little bit about why and how we go about doing any product changes. So our product vision isn't something we really dream up of overnight. Uh, a lot of months of hard graft and work have gone into uh, what we do and whenever we make big changes like this, and it always begins with research. And so we, uh, over the last few months, we have undertaken um, a lot of research, varying different ways. We've done a, a lot of quantitative surveys, posing very specific questions at the conveyancing market to help us understand who the products should be aimed at and what they need to include. And then the second step was to then hold a product focus group uh, with conveyancers from all around the country. So we did that and we really tried to pick people not just to use Grantshire products, but people who didn't use our products um, to really get a better understanding of you know, what works and what doesn't work. And this allows us to really drill into some key themes and come up uh, with any design changes. So we then tested these designs and again with conveyancers, this has resulted in primarily the new Avista that we're going to show you or I'm going to show you later on uh, in this presentation. But a, f a few key themes came out at various stages of our research and uh, we've put some of the key themes on the screen for you. Uh, a huge part of that was consistency in terms of content. Um, consistency is key, but also interpretation, I would say, is even more key. Uh, a report that has a lot of information uh, so that, you know, in, enough information so that as conveyancers, you're not having to either order additional reports or going back and forth and ordering um, different reports afterwards, uh, making for a single turnaround time from a single provider, making things uh, a bit more streamlined, making things a bit faster. Um, price, of course, is always all, also a factor. Um, but really just trying to look at how we can streamline things and how we can we can provide information should you want all of it in one go. Uh, whilst a single product could be seen as an information overload, um, our three clear result categories and our Grantshire IQ tool, which is what we use for intelligent filtering, uh, makes the single report digestible and easy to use for, for both yourselves as conveyancers, but also we are, keeping in mind the actual home buyer as well as the lender where necessary. And we'll take a closer look at this later on as well. And then of course, rather than creating a new suite of products, um, which we did consider as well, for ease we've chosen to enhance all of our existing uh, products. So we'll cover all of that uh, in the next few slides. Now, I know that your time is absolutely precious and we are trying to make uh, your lives as straightforward as possible. We know how busy you've all been. We know how the whole, the whole industry has been busy. And we've really been working hard to bring a single solution to help speed up that process and make things easier and faster. Um, and we understand that for anyone dealing with land and property transactions, it can be an absolute complete minefield when it comes to searches, which is why we've come up with a single solution. And to be fair, we'd actually been asked for this quite a long time ago to really try and address your due diligence requirements. We've kept our standard searches, but we've enhanced them. And then of course we've added or introduced this all new singing, all dancing uh, 
Avista. So Avista historically was a seven in one search, but now an all encompassing environmental planning infrastructure, mining and ground stability uh, search. So basically it's, it's, as far as I'm aware, the only one out there that has all of these things in it. So for us, what really drives it is compliance. One of the biggest key themes, of course, is compliance. So GroundSure aren't going to produce searches that don't at least meet the minimum compliance requirements. Now, I'm just going to quickly touch on data because, of course, data, you know, that's what drives and that, that's what underpins everything we do on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, the value we add is not just in the data that we look at and we provide to you, but actually it's the interpretation of that data. And this is something that we are very much aware of and we've been doing it for our entire history. But as more uh, you know, reports come out into the market, more data-led products, we knew that we needed to make sure that the interpretation and nuance was one of the key things that, that people realize is, is where we add value. Um, so you've got you know two big key tools that we've put on the, on the screen um, and this is sort of some of the bigger pieces of data that we look at um, we've got the ground True national brownfield risk model historically we may have referred to this as the historic historical land use database and this is a key tool that we developed and used for many many years and underpins primarily the contaminated land assessment used in our environmental searches so the nbrm has been developed and refined over our 20 years of reporting and uses not only our comprehensive proprietary data, um, but also incorporates third party data sets such as waste and landfill sites, permits, incidents, and registers. So each land use within the NBRM has been expertly risk ranked in based on feature type and possible associated contaminants. So this combined, of course, with the knowledge that our environmental consultants have and any of the additional information that we have on sites. Um, really helps assess the possible risk of contamination poses, uh, uh, sorry, assess the possible risks of contamination that is posed to each individual property. And then we've got Rancher IQ, uh, which we have been using now for, for many years. And basically this really helps us provide some intelligent filtering. We know that too much information is a bad thing. So it's how do we make sure that we're presenting the most relevant inf uh, information possible. And we wanna only be presenting information that we know needs to be looked at. And you know, you're gonna need it. To, to pay a little bit more attention to and sort of we're removing some of the stuff that you wouldn't actually uh, have needed to look at at all, anything that tends to be passed. So this is this is what ground true IQ is. And then finally, with the release of our GRS report last year, we have the National Mining and Stability Model. So this is a tool that GroundShare and our sister company, um, and is now part of the GroundShare company, Mining Searches UK, has developed and used for many years when it, within our mining and, and ground stability reports. And the model has been refined over 40 odd some years um, or of reporting and investigating mining related risk. So it is absolutely a key feature when it comes to if you happen to be in an area where there is mining, uh, this is the tool that we're using. And, you know, with each report that's ordered, uh, it's, it potentially uses our intelligent alerts and then it get, goes through this database to determine the risk to property. Um, in addition to that, we then, of course, have our specialist mining consultants who will then review the data available for the surrounding property to then determine if there is risk. So, you know, all of these key pieces of data and how we refine and how we assess risk are all used within our reports. And that is effectively how we continue to provide uh, reports that over time have evolved and have changed and have gotten better. And that's what we're continuously uh, striving to do. Now let's take a look at the product enhancement. So we're gonna start with the home screen report. So why have we enhanced the home screen? So originally, for those of you who may or may not know, the original home screen wasn't fully Law Society practice note compliant as it only com complied with contaminated land um, practice note, but not the flood risk, which means that you would have had to have bought a separate standalone flood report when required. So we want to, to ensure moving forward that as a minimum, clients were fully covered for the basic risks. So we decided to include it as standard. So from July 1st onwards, the ground to home screen covers you now in full for contaminated land, 
full flood ground stability rate on as well as your planning constraints. So effectively, for those clients that were buying a home buyer's report prior to July 1st, um, this is the exact same data that was in that. So in theory, it's kind of a name change. Um, but uh, from our very, ba if you look at our core products, which is Home Screen Home Buyers Vista, our very basic now covers both contaminated land and full flood, which means you're never going to have to buy a separate flood report again. So again, trying to make things a bit faster uh, and, and a bit speedier for you. Moving on to the home buyers. So as of July 1st, the home buyers now includes a full energy report. Now this covers current and proposed wind, solar, oil and gas, as well as other major energy infrastructure. It will also come with a full rail transportation report, uh, including HS2, Crossrail 1 and 2, National Rail, Historic Railways and Tunnels, and all London Rail Infrastructure, DLR, London Underground, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then it also comes with a full planning applications report, including enhancements to our large project planning data, which I will talk about a little bit later. So all three of those have become standard additions to the new version of the home buyers from July 1st. So it is a seven in one report. And you'll also notice on the front page, you've got the action alert uh, right above the slide plan, which there is really there to help you manage your workload. So it's at, at a glance uh, and shows you the next steps indicator. So makes you, you can look at it and, and you've got the traffic light system and you know exactly whether or not the report has something you do need a little bit more time and care and attention to look at. Um, otherwise, if it's green with a nice big green, green tick on the front, and it's a one or a two, you know, everything in there is fairly minor and you can pretty much spend minimal time on it. So that's the big change for the home buyers. You get energy, transportation, and full planning. And then, Moving on to the big report, as I fondly call it, our environmental report on steroids, which is the Avista. So Avista com complies with many areas of the conveyancing handbook from the usual standard flood and contaminated land to mining and mineral extraction and ground stability. Um, you know, there is even a section in, in the handbook on existing and proposed railways and subways. So it is really everything you need in a single search. You don't need to ask your client for any more money or you don't need to delay the transaction by having to buy any more additional searches that are recommended. This can be particularly helpful if you are dealing with cases out of area that you or your client may not be familiar with. It's a popular option uh, for that. And we get a lot of clients using Avista for you know, out of area work for that particular reason. Now, the new Avista will have everything in it that it's already had from an environmental perspective previously plus a full mining solution. So what do we mean with a full mining solution? This will include coal, if you're in a coal area. It will also, the CON29M will also include a mine entry interpretive assessment, if appropriate. It includes non-coal, a full non-coal report, which covers all 60 other minerals extracted in this country, as well as a Cheshire brine report, if you also happen to be in a Cheshire brine area. So, I mean, it really is the all singing, all dancing report. Historically, our turnaround time for Avista is currently 24 hours, but due to the increased level of professional opinion required in the new Avista, the turnaround time is now 24 to 48 hours. Majority of the reports will be returned within 24 hours, but if you happen to be in the unfortunate position, or fortunate position, I guess, depending on how you see it, um, where there is a mining risk as well as an environmental risk, then that report will not only just go through the environmental consultants team, um, the two people on that team that it goes through, it'll also go through uh, the mining and the geology team for two people to look at on, their, on, on that team. So you're getting four people instead of two. Uh, and historically, you know, Avista was always our all singing, all dancing report. And now it truly is that, and it remains that that way because it does include really everything that we pretty much do. Um, so it is an incredible amount of information and we'll talk a little bit about 
the the actual design changes. But I've sort of just cycled through a couple of iterations on the screen for you of what it could potentially uh, look like depending on what we find. So what's new? Let's take a closer look at the changes. So this is what Avista looks like currently, right? You can see there's different ratings on each category with the different colors. There's absolutely nothing wrong with this. It's a little bit busy, but we were looking at things. How do we make things simpler? How do we make things cleaner? Um, these changes that I'm showing you today are very subtle, but they're full of intent. They have a lot of purpose behind them. They appear very, very minor, but they very much have a purpose. So what is new? So this is what it looks like now, or historically before July 1st, and this is what it looks like now, right? So one of the first things you'll probably notice is that we've removed the overall professional opinion, that big green tick, uh, and now just provide an opinion per result category. Um, while we were doing the research for this, uh, it was pointed out to us by some solicitors that that big green tick was a little bit redundant because we were already giving results for every single category. So, and the professional opinion only applied to contaminated land and flood. So therefore we removed it and you just get uh, an opinion per result category as normal. You can see also we have three new outcomes on the screen. So you've got key results. Um, these are outcomes that require attention uh, for your, you know, from yourself and at, when appropriate, the lender as well should be notified where applicable. So when I say key results, what would be class as key results? Um, contaminated land, always a key issue when it's been identified. Flooding, always a key issue when it's identified. Coal mining, only a key issue if you're within a coal mining area and when it's been identified. Otherwise, it will fall under the for information. Um, things like, th there's a lot more nuance in this report. So things like infrastructure, so infrastructure encompasses both energy and transportation, but infrastructure will only be in key results if we find HS2 or Crossrail, which are of course the big rail uh, projects um, within a particular radius, radius of the property. Otherwise it will fall under for information. So that's the only time it'll ever be flagged up as a key result. Then next underneath that, you can see that there is the informatives or for information category. So these are results that a home buyer would wanna know about. So things like planning, energy and transportation, um, again, infrastructure, ground stability. Uh, so they're there, for, they're, they're there for information, but as you can see, it's gray, it's not amber, it's not alarming, it is there to show them that, hey, this information is here for you to look at and here for you to be aware of, but nothing major serious is going to come of it. And then the also search category, which is at the bottom, is basically everything that's passed. So this shows the list of data categories that we've also searched, but have completely passed our assessment, hence why there's all the nice green ticks. So that front cover and those key results is fully dynamic. So the results position, are positioned and based on their outcome, and they're subdivided by their significance, i.e. key results and informatives. So issues requiring attention are always at the top and will always be under key results. So anything important is always gonna be floated to the top, right? This design creates the best possible communication and arrangements of outcomes for each property every single time. So don't be alarmed that each Avista will be ordered slightly differently but it is literally based on the findings. So anything that is really important, we will always flag up at the very, very top of the page. Um, hopefully that helps and that helps provide you that additional information. You've then got your ground your IQ, which again is a tool that I suspect most of you will be familiar with. And that's really just there to help you manage your caseload. Um, so, you know, straight away at the front page, whether or not something is going to take a little bit more time to look at or not. And then this third feature, which I've highlighted at the bottom, which is underneath the site plan, is the ground for boilerplate or home buyers focus boilerplate. And I think this is a really, really lovely, subtle feature. So the research that we did, which of course included all of those surveys and those focus groups, revealed that these types of searches are for the home buyer. And if there was anything we could do to help draw the attention to the importance of the contents of these reports to the home buyer, that would be really helpful. You do all these searches, and a lot of the time, from what, at least from what I've been told, the home buyers don't even read them. 
So how do we try and help draw their attention to this? And how do we try and help um, help you guys try and get them to read these? So we've created this home buyer book focus boilerplate on the front page. So if you can't see, it might be a bit too small, so I will read it out to you. But basically what it says is, welcome to the neighborhood. Your conveyancer has you covered. A Vista complies, compiles key property information and checks against all standard environmental and ground hazards. Read on to discover your property. So this provides a clear indicator for the home buyer that this product is for them to read and that their conveyancer has done them proud by ordering the most comprehensive search uh, available. So it's very, very small and subtle, but it's there talking to the actual home buyer to say, hey, Mr. Home Buyer, please, please read me because this information is for you and this is the information about your house. Um, so I think that's a, a, you know, hopefully a very, very helpful and useful addition because uh, it is right on the front page. There's no excuse for anybody not to read it or see it. Um, and then another very, very subtle design change you'll see is the icons. So we have actually changed and improved our icons for a much cleaner, sleeker design. So historically, there was a different icon for each one, for contaminated land, for flood, each, each single um, risk category had its own little picture. And while very cute and nice to look at, and again, there's nothing wrong with that, it's okay, actually, how do we, we change this from cute and nice to look at to actually, how do we provide you with information that will be useful? And so therefore you get the green tick, which of course is what everybody wants to see on the front page of something, or an eye, or in some cases, if we have identified something, then you will get uh, the eye that's orange or red. So a very, very subtle design change, but also a clean design change and makes things a lot simpler and easier on the eye to look at. So those are the major big changes within the Avista and on the front page of the Avista. Hopefully uh, you find that bit, bit useful. Moving on, last couple of slides, uh, just wanted to touch quickly on planning. So a very divisive topic for some people. Um, planning, I would say, is one of the hardest data sets to work with because there are so many planning applications uh, that come through on a daily basis. Um, on you know the same the same property multiple times over over many many years now over the last year and a half our data provider Glenigans has been collecting planning application boundary extents for all large development projects submitted since May of 2020 so these are now included as standard in the Avista in the home buyers as well as any other report, standalone report we have containing plan, planning data. So this is a really big step forward in improving the accuracy and reporting of these types of projects as they were traditionally point-based, but covering large areas. So when you are looking at planning data, like you can see on the screen, historically large projects always just used to be on a point. Um, that's how they're submitted. So when some, anyone submits a planning application, they're at, that planning application is tied to grid references, which gives you a general idea of where a planning application is, but doesn't really give you a true to life idea of how actually from a, a 3D perspective um, or for, from a polygonized data perspective, it uh, doesn't give you a great idea of, of how it's actually going to impact uh, the property that you're looking at and the surrounding area in question. So by the fact that they have started adding polygons to these large developments, we are now able to really understand how a large development is going to impact a property, how close it is, um, how it's going to impact uh, to the boundary of a property. And so when I say large developments, you'll see the little um, definition we've put at the bottom with an asterisk, which large developments are considered to be residential builds of 10 or more houses or one to nine units if it's under 10, but the value is greater than a million pounds, and all other projects with a value of 250,000 pounds or more. So, you know, the, the search radiuses we have are, are dynamic. So depending on whether or not you're in an urban, rural, or mega urban area, will determine how far our search radius does go for planning, because if you're in a big city center, you don't want, you know, a 750 meter search radius because you, you, 
it wouldn't really impact you that much. Whereas if you are in a rural area, you do want a bigger, wider net uh, cast. Um, but this will, moving forward, really help with accuracy when we're reporting on uh, large project developments and, and provide a much better uh, um, true indicator of how a large development is actually going to impact uh, your client's property. So that's great new addition, and that's now you know that's live and in in, in, in in all our reports that have planning data. So the new Vista benefits as well as the home buyers. Now this is just a little kind of quick comparison. So you know that's the RRP excluding VAT for the new uh, version of Avista. Um, if you were to buy any of these reports separately, so if you happen to buy um, a home buyers and a geo risk or some other mining report, uh, non coal mining or coal mining report, if you wanted to buy things separately, you can see um, there are some efficiencies to be made with Avista being a single search in one. And so in, in terms of a client's uh, compliance perspective, this is basically how we set them out. Uh, we do know that many solicitors buy their reports in packs. So really it's just kind of looking at things from this little guide that we've made to help determine which report is appropriate for needs. So you've got basic compliance, you've got enhanced compliance, and you've got maximum compliance. So that's really what we're, how we're looking at it. So home screen, basic compliance, you're familiar with the area, you pretty much know the relevant risks, but you want a basic enviro to cover you. Uh, enhanced, um, you want to cover everything, but you you know that mining isn't a key issue or isn't an issue, or it's something that your client doesn't want to know about. And then Avista being like the all singing, all dancing, maximum compliance report. So that's kind of how we sorted them out um, within our core reports. And there's just a visual for you to see which bits we've added to each report we've got. So you've got the teal, the teal sections denoting the new uh, reports, uh, new areas that we've added into the reports. And that is pretty much it for me. Um, I hope you found the session, uh, the session useful. Um, please, please, please do reach out to us if you have any questions. I'm just going to have a look to see if anybody's typed in any questions. I can't see any questions um, submitted today, but I did have somebody email me yesterday with a question, so I'm going to read it out now. And basically, the question says, how do you think conveyancers will view the new home screen search, which was previously search, previously the search that offered less by way of information, even though it is now the previous home buyers by way of content? So for those solicitors that previously used the ground to home buyers search, and you, you basically don't want any additional um, data from what you had previously, then it's just a name change. Effectively, if you were buying home buyers before the 1st of July and you don't want anything new, then you basically take the home screen report and it's exactly the same data uh, as you were having previously. So these changes have, you know, it's been what now, two weeks? The changes have in large part been, been welcomed. Um, again, I've mentioned this previously, the home screen report, historically, if you were looking at it from a law society practice note and conveyancing handbook perspective, didn't meet all of the basic requirements for compliance because it didn't include a full flood report, just a flood screen. So from our perspective, we just wanted to make sure that even our most lowest tier, most basic report met those basic uh, compliance requirements of both the Law Society and the Conveyancers Handbook. And at that point, it kind of made sense to then enhance all of our car core products uh, as well, which is what I've talked about today. So hopefully um, that is helpful but if anybody has any questions please feel free to um, reach out and we will do our best to answer any questions moving forward so thanks very much have a wonderful rest of the day um, and if you could take a couple seconds to answer our feedback survey that would be much appreciated thank you